designer, but I actually prefer to consider myself as someone who helps people live better in a home environment. Um, I love the idea of being able to help people, be it if they're divorced or if their families um, space plan better so that they can even you know, stay together better as a family when they're together in their, in their uh, off time or if it's minimalism and trying to declutter their spaces to help them live a better stress-free life. How did I get to be an interior designer is actually a really long answer and I think it starts from when I was a kid. My brothers and I and my mom moved around quite a bit um, from home to home and you know of course other than packing being really really annoying the idea when you're a kid of leaving your safe place your your room which is your favorite space in your home at that time or your friends in the neighborhood seems a little daunting and so my mother was aware of this and so what she would do was try to make it exciting and she was the very first person to introduce me to a decor store uh, there was a local one in our neighborhood and she helped me pick out my paint colors she introduced me to wallpaper and banners uh, she let me reupholster my desk chair so anything to help me get excited and that kind of just stayed with me and every time we moved I helped plan the furniture around and now um, you know she's inspired me to kind of do that for others so that's what I have you know in me to kind of help other people I try to make sure that they um, I lost my train of thought um, well, I, I like the idea that my mother inspired me um, so that I would feel safe and excited about living at home and I want to make sure that no matter what the situation is, no matter what reason clients call an interior designer, that they have the same experience and that they're excited to come back home and live a better life the way my mom tried to do for me. I think a lot of things drive me. Um, I, I think in my family we're all very ambitious. We never just settle. We always want more, which I'm not sure is a positive thing. Um, we're constantly setting goals for ourselves. Um, I think what drives me is a bit of design education. I love this new movement called minimalism, and you can find that on, you know, a documentary series and everything that entails. So I like to learn about that, um, and I like to help implement that into my work so there's lots of theories as to why minimalism is um, healthier and how uh, this plays a role in psychological moods and feelings and so I love to learn about that I'm driven by what could be new and fun um, to help my clients live a better life it always comes down to wanting them to live better Something that I think will change in home decor stores because of COVID and something that would be important to me is the level of service, which is already fantastic with most of my uh, retailers and suppliers. Um, but I think what happens now is that we have to come in with purpose. And so your, your reps or your retailers will reach out to you and ask you and provide you maybe with more information. I think that would be really helpful for homeowners or designers, professionals, to know what can be provided to them so that when they get to meet in, in person at a retailer that they know exactly what they have to do, what they're looking for, um, not too much time is lost, and that meetings now become a whole lot more thoughtful. I walked into Union for the first time I think a little over a decade ago and I was blown away by the showroom. It's um, very very expansive and there's lots of beautiful things to look at that you probably wouldn't know where to start and I came in here as I believe a student and now the funny thing is which seems so big and, and almost endless is now something that feels very familiar and safe for me because Union um, the reps here the people here the service here feels something like home it feels something like a family every time I need anything the responses are quick they're all Always happy to help me. I can think about one of my very first commercial projects which consisted of a large order which I was so scared to do. I, I hardly knew what I was doing. It was the very beginning of my career and the reps just sat with me until I understood everything from A to Z and these are the things that you don't forget as a designer. So I, I kind of have this
this family feeling um, in terms of my relationship with Union. My favorite room in my home is actually because I live in a condo uh, and I share it with my boyfriend. The dining room living area is considered one space, it's one open space, which is mostly how people live now in open concepts. Um, I think that's where some of the best memories are made, where you know you invite people over and some people are on the couch, some people are in the dining room, some people are just snacking and having this really relaxed, casual atmosphere really does take place in those two areas. So when I think of a favorite place in my home, other than when I'm sleeping and really cozy in my bed, I would have to say it's, it's where all the memories take place in the living and dining area. One thing right now that drives me crazy in my home is the vanity in our bathroom. This is the, why it's important to hire a designer, note to everybody. Um, the vanity is actually standard height and the previous professional decided to place an overmount sink on top of a standard height vanity. So this leaves you with very little room to wash your face, wash your hands. Um, it becomes a very bad ergonomic and so hiring a designer you would know how to use those ergonomics better and why those things are bad. So that would be the one thing that I would change immediately because I love skincare and I cannot wash my face properly. <laughs> I have a few favorite picks from uh, Union and I th actually can I have four favorite picks and not three I know three is a more popular choice so the first being um, Kelly Wrestler for visual comfort absolutely everything she does is so artful and creative that even as a minimalist I have an appreciation for um, the second thing would be a local Montreal artist named Adelon Kayser. His stuff is beautiful. You should come check it out in Union and see his gallery. Um, I'd say the third thing would be at the back of the store. You can find this beautiful Manon Leblanc wallpaper. It's, it, you can't miss it. It's floral. Um, it's, it has a very dark tonality to it and it kind of reminds me of one of the art pieces that we put in a recent project that we completed. Three words that can describe me um, are maybe on a personal and work side would be um, loyal. I take loyalty very seriously between my suppliers and my friends and my family because I know this creates strong relationships and bonds. Loving, I am a very passionate and affectionate person, be it for work and in my personal life. And learning, because I'm constantly learning how to be a better friend, girlfriend, daughter, sister, um, and designer. I mean, and you should never stop learning. This is constant for me, and I, I actually quite enjoy um, all of the learning curves that come with um, having my own business in interior design. What is my third? Okay, oh, yeah. Um, three favorite spots that I love in Montreal. One would be my mom's house. I know this is probably not uh, a public place for anyone to visit, especially not during COVID, but it's my favorite place and I miss it so much. Um, my favorite second place to go is L'Oratoire Saint-Joseph. I just like to sit on the steps there. It's where I go to have a moment of silence and peace, just to kind of unwind in a stressful week. Um, and just when you feel like you might be alone while well, you're amongst so many people that are doing the exact same as you, everyone's sitting quietly on the steps and so, you're not really alone and it's, it's just a really nice um, energy to kind of unwind. And my third favorite thing is my, my favorite neighborhood cafe called San Gennaro. And one of the reasons why I love it so much is because it's an amical atmosphere. And every time you go there, you feel like the faces are familiar, even if you don't know anyone. It's very welcoming and cozy. And during COVID-19, they were closed for a little bit. And the entire neighborhood had gathered around when they did decide to open up again. And it was just so nice to see how everyone does gather around these, these coffee shops. Um, not just for the coffee, but for the atmosphere and the friendly faces. And I, I, and I love it so much.
another fun up and coming project. All my projects are fun, but my next creative project is one that feels very different, and that's a dental clinic. Um, it's located in Vaudreuil d'Arion from one of the greatest dentists I've ever met in my life, Dr. Nilesh Amin. And he has hired an architect from Rotterdam who has pretty much experience in this in this environment. And pre-COVID, um, I think everybody had waiting rooms and if you had to go to the clinic or the dental office or anywhere, then you'd sit amongst lots of people. But pre-COVID, we even planned that there wouldn't be a waiting room. And so I actually think that this design concept that we're doing where there's a meditation room where you could wait, there's a lounge area where you can wait, and no waiting rooms, is actually gonna change the face of clinics across Montreal, Quebec, and probably Canada. I think we're gonna set a trend, if I can call it that, for how new clinics um, should greet and, and have their patients waiting. It's a wrap! Yay! That was amazing!